Yesterday, we told you about NASA's plan to return humans to the moon by 2024 and build a permanent presence there. That, in turn, leads to the next step, which would be human exploration of Mars. But how do space stations and lunar landings and Mars missions, how do those affect us back on Earth? Well, more than you might imagine. KRMG goes in-depth. And here's KRMG's Russell Mills. For starters, you may have heard of rare earth metals. They're rare because they're not actually from the earth, and they're vital to any number of industries. NASA thinks there could be trillions of dollars worth of those metals on the far side of the moon. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. The problem with, with the earth is we've got this very active geology and a very active hydrosphere. So those rare earth metals... Um, they're, they're not only rare when, they're, when they impact the Earth, but they become even more rare over time. They degrade. They, they, they're found in very trace amounts after billions of years after, a, after an asteroid impact. Now, if NASA's right. We're talking about changing the balance of power on Earth when we talk about that kind of resource. So how does the U.S. claim those resources? Well, turns out there's an international space treaty. So in 1969, when we landed on the moon and we put the American flag there, we did not declare the moon property of the United States because we signed a treaty saying that we wouldn't. And the Russians signed a treaty saying that they wouldn't. So that was kind of the, that there was the beginning of an idea that you could not own the moon. Well, you can't own the ocean either, but you can fish from it or build offshore oil platforms. It's really simple. And I put it into law when I was in the House of Representatives. You don't have to own the moon to own the resources of the moon. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Imagine being able to 3D print new kidneys. If you try to create that kind of tissue on Earth using adult stem cells, it goes flat. The tissue just goes flat because of the gravity. But in space, you can create the three dimensions that it, 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 mimics, it mimics a baby in the womb, if you can imagine that. Because when you're in amniotic fluid, you're actually in kind of a, a, a weightlessness environment. Who knows? They may be able to grow hearts, lungs with your DNA more immediately. We can use materials to create artificial retinas in space in a way you cannot do on Earth. So if there are people that have macular degeneration... We can, we can create artificial retinas in space, bring them back to Earth, and then, and then prevent people from going blind. Manufacturing in space could fundamentally change any number of industries. We're also creating fiber optics in a way that's so pure you don't need repeaters, drives down the cost in an amazing way. So now we've got private companies proving that they can create fiber optic cables on the International Space Station in a way where the market case closes to create a manufacturing capability for fiber optic cables in space. And there's the key, closing the case for commercial development of space. It could be a game changer in ways that we can literally only imagine at the moment. Also, Mills, 1023 KRMG, Tulsa's News and Talk. Okay, mind blown. That was cool. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, uh, Administrator Bridenstine. 546 Fox 20.